I'm going to illustrate the two different ways of thinking about the population with time series. So uh, here I've loaded the forecast package and I'm going to randomly generate some data for the first perspective, which is thinking about an infinitely long sequence of which we observe just a finite short amount of data. So here I'm going to, well, 400 is not infinity, but you know, it's pretty big. Uh, so I'm gonna generate 400 time series observations with a particular uh, structure to it. And we won't worry about that part yet. And then set up some graphical parameters. And then I will, plot the overall data first. We can get a sense of what that looks like. So all the data, this is supposed to be the infinitely long series looks like this. And then you can imagine this is like the population. And then in practice, we are, you know, say somewhere over here and we observe maybe 40 periods of data in here. So we get a sample from within this very, very long or infinitely long sequence. So for example, here, if we start at period 91 and go to 130, it would look like that. So we might get this sample. And then we're trying to learn about sort of the overall properties of this infinitely long sequence. Um, or we might happen to start in period 131 and end in 170. So we could, instead of getting this sample, we might get this sample. So they look different, they have different values, uh, but the hope is that they're both sort of representative of this overall sequence and so that we can learn about some of the properties of this sequence using either this sample or this sample or this sample. Uh, so that's one perspective as we sample a short sequence from within a very long or infinitely long sequence. The other perspective is this sort of superpopulation idea or many universes. Uh, so I'll set some things up here. I'll just look at five universes to be concrete and develop intuition. But again, you can imagine an infinite number of different universes where they all have the same sort of properties generating the data, uh, just that they have different values. Um, so I'm gonna plot these five different universes all together so we can see here at the top in the blue, this is one universe. Um, and then here's another universe, what that time series looks like. So these are all going over the same time periods. So they're sort of in parallel uh, in the same time, just in different universes. One here, one here, one here. And you can see they all have a similar property in that when they're sort of high, they tend to stay high, or when they're low, they tend to stay low. So they have a high degree of autocorrelation or persistence. Um, they're not just jumping up and down randomly every period. Uh, but even though they all have the same property, we can see clearly the values themselves are different. Uh, so for example, uh, up here, you know, over these years, this fifth universe happened to be high and sort of stay high, whereas this middle third universe happened to be low and then it stayed low. Uh, so the values themselves can be very different across the universes, but it's these sort of underlying properties like the autocorrelation and things like that that are the same uh, 
when they're generating the data in these different universes, similar to the superpopulation perspective we talked about in an earlier chapter.